Mac and Mac guys here on Birds 365 Dallas Week. Cowboys coming up on Sunday, and we got Chris Franklin from NJ.com to jump in with us. And you are the perfect guy to have on right here, right now, because I want to take I want to take you back to April. Okay. The NFL schedule comes out. And we immediately go to the Eagles and see what they've got. And, ooh, looks e- early easy. Ooh, look at that gauntlet they got to run in the middle of the state. Oh, my God, back to back to back weeks. Blah, blah. One thing that jumped out at me, I remember bringing this up here on Birds 365. I wanted to know why the Eagles were playing the Cowboys at home first and in Dallas second. Because usually they flop that every year. The year it's Cowboys in Philadelphia and then Eagles in Dallas. And the next year it's the Eagles in Dallas early and the Cowboys coming to Philadelphia. They almost always do it the exact reverse of what they had it the year before. This is the second consecutive year where the Eagles go to Dallas later in the season. They play the Cowboys here first. I know how many league sources you have. You're so tied into 345 Madison Avenue. It's ridiculous. <laughs> why, why did Roger Goodell tell the Eagles, no, we're not doing that this year? Boy, I- Wait, you know, the, the script writers, you know, didn't they just say they wanted to make sure you know, the Eagles have issues down there in, uh, in, in Arlington and Jerry World, so it makes it more drama. The script place? writers told Roger Goodell he had to do it that <laughs> way. I, I'm you see, did either of you guys see those commercials at the beginning of the year? They yeah, had they were great. The yeah. readings around the reading yeah. room, and how can we write the most ridiculous things <laughs> about great. the upcoming Keegan season? Michael those Key, were very the, great, uh, the, the great Hingle McCringleberry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Key, one of the great sketches of all time, Hingle. Look it up on YouTube, uh, by the way. Um, Yeah, by the way, speaking of script writers, Chris, uh, first of all, I'm impressed by Jody that you even remember that. I I didn't know they did that, to be honest. Switch year to year, uh, typically. Typically, uh, yeah. I I didn't didn't even know that. One and any other. Um, uh, But speaking of script writers, I mean, come on. They fire uh, Josh McDaniels and Dave Ziegler and the head coach. Is Antonio Pierce, and they're playing the New York Giants? Come on, that's pure script. Pure yeah, yeah. script. Yeah, I remember that commercial, too. I think when they were pointing to, oh, they're going to love this, I think that's what the part they were looking at, saying, oh, they're going to love this part. I mean, yeah. The so fact that they waited this game, late. <laughs> but they're playing the Giants. they got to come up with an angle. That's a hell of a script. Antonio yeah. Pierce is a great linebacker for the linebacker, for the Giants. And the, and the fact they did it so late on a Tuesday of all things, it's like, wait, like if you're if you're so angry, you're gonna fire the guy, fire the guy after the game or something like that, or 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 Monday. You're gonna wait till Tuesday when most of the people are asleep and all the reason I was still up, I couldn't sleep. So I'm sitting like, uh, huh? It's such okay, a now I can't sleep. <laughs> he didn't play till Monday night, so yeah. that pushed yeah. everything back for them. And I'll give credit to to Davis because he takes a little grief. I've heard the. He's too. He's not his father. He doesn't have the fire and brimstone of his father. He doesn't want to fire the coach because he doesn't want to pay off the coach. I actually think he's gotten a bad rap. Good on him for firing that coach yesterday. You know why? Because that coach stinks. He does. And, stink, and right. you're very lucky, Philadelphia Eagle fans, that he's not the head coach of the Philadelphia yes, Eagles. Because Howie yes, Rose, we wanted to hire him badly here, and Jeff Laurie said, "No, we won't have that." Well, Howie recommended him. I, you know, Jeffrey turned it down. But uh, yeah, because just imagine if it happened, uh, would Howie still be here? That's the thing. Like if it was that well, bad, Howie, Howie'd be fine. He'd be, he'll, he'll be fine on his seventh coach. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey, that, Jeffrey so made bad. that mistake once. He's not going to make it again. But uh, yeah. all that right, let's so talk bad. about Howie. Come on, Chris. He doesn't do anything. What's wrong with Howie Roseman? What, what, every, he, he makes a splash, <laughs> but he doesn't do it. Uh, the timing is incorrect uh, for some people. You got to do it. He's got to do it on the day. He's got to do it on the day. Oh. <sighs> Jeez, that's why I, I, I don't get the uproar. Like everybody's talking to like he's how he's cooking. Before. Like last week when he got oh how he's cooking, how he's got all this stuff and it is looking great, and that's, and then now everything doesn't make a move right now. I was like, what is he doing? He's I don't get his. Like, it's so fickle. I, I don't understand. I mean, the guy was able to get Kevin Byard. You need you can't grab everybody that's a, quote unquote available, and, and it's it was tough. To, it was tough to get anything done. Like if. If people are asking for twos and, and, and ones and everything for certain guys, how, how you going to get it? You still have to pay Devontae Smith and Landon Dickerson an extension pretty soon. So he's got still under contract. And when are you going to play it? you got so many people that are about to come back. You don't have the roster space. 
Yeah. And it's going to be bad enough. You're going to be cutting some people. So yeah. I don't know what they can do. <laughs> it's so pretty cool. All right, CF. Uh, everyone's got opinions. They're kind of like sphincters. Everybody has one. And if you can cut through it a little bit and get to the fact that and Jack Prescott in his career in games that he's started and played more than half is eight and two against the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, I know Dak. I know Dak's lack of production in playoffs and not being able to get it done. But in season, he's eight and two against the Philadelphia Eagles. And he's only started one game where Jalen Hurts was the opposing quarterback. Now it was game three of the Sirianni era, and certainly the Eagles have changed and improved since. But history says Zach is a tough out for the Philadelphia Eagles. You believe that this week? Yeah, I do. I think the Sam Howell may have, and Eric B. Enemy may have given them a game plan how to do it. Because I look at the way that they were able to use the short passing game, and you know, the easiest way, especially you don't want Dak to start throwing interceptions downfield, is to make it easy, makeable throws. And for the way that the commanders were attacking the Eagles, especially in the middle of that field, you throw C.D. Lamb going on those crossing routes and trying to match him up while he's running away from defenders and, and finding soft spots that zone, it gives me some it gives you some concern. It, it really does. And I, I look at the way, especially with Dak, if he gets going early and going in a rhythm, he can be a problem. And... I think it's going to be imperative. I think it's going to be a week where you have to do a, be a, do a tendency breaker and just say, you know what? You, you think we're going to play passive, we're going to play the zone. Maybe blitz him a couple times early and get him out of that funk because if you do that, then, you know, old Dak, start, Dak that plays other teams in the middle of the year starts to show up and maybe pour some pressure. So I think it's a week where this, this is going to be the week where I think you look at Sean Desai and you, you, you laud him for – what he did against the Dolphins, I think this is the week where he really makes his, he really proves himself. I really truly do because going to a bye <laughs> and you got those two weeks and this is where you start to make those, uh, those assumptions like what are you going to do the rest of the season? You know, for the most part, let's talk about Sean Desai, Chris Franklin, because I think uh, a lot of people have, uh, really like Sean. I think there's a lot of things to like. I think partially it's because they hated the old defensive coordinator <laughs> so much, but, uh, I, I, I'm I'm starting to say, you know, come on. Uh, Jody said sphincter, so I'll say crap, uh, crap or get off the pot when it comes to slot corner. Make a damn decision, man. Uh, all these moving parts are not helping this secondary, this back seven as a whole. And I'll throw the linebackers in there as well. You know, if Nicobe's your guy, Nicobe's your guy. Put him out there with Zach Cunningham. And Nick Morrow, thanks for the couple good games. And uh, if we need you again, we'll call on you again. I, I I think there's been a lack of chemistry in the back seven. And I think it's up now. Fire just got here. That, you can't help that. But I think it would be help if you made a decision. I like that you're open-minded and looking at all these different avenues. But I think we're at the point where you got to make a decision. Yeah, I think it, it, when it comes to, uh, and I'm splitting on this one too. I think when it comes to slot corner, I don't have a mind. I don't have a problem with them switching and matching up. This is the people that they're using in certain situations that I and I think it's a little tough. I, I like Sidney Brown a lot. I think he's going to be a really bright future. But when they're using a lot of like the eleven and you put him in the slot against a quick wide receiver, I think he's. I think that can present some issues when it comes to stuff like that. Linebacker wise, I don't have a problem with the rotation thing. I think it's telling that when they haven't put Lacoby, when they keep put him in and out, I don't know if that's say, you know, I, I thought we've heard so much time before the season began. He's a three down linebacker. He's a three down linebacker, and they're not using him in that way. And it's like, and I start to wonder, like, is, are they worried about his coverage or not? And why are they throwing him in to mix it up? So I, I would think it's best to solidify that part right now and just put Nicobe in there. I like the way Morrow played early in the season. That's always like the way he plays special teams. But if Nicobe's your future, quote unquote future in the middle, you gotta let him play all those snaps in the middle. But slot corner, I, I have no issues with him mixing them mixing and matching it up. I mean, especially if with how, how about much when Roby comes back. I think that's you, or even your slot corner. Bang. That's it. No, I I'm still mixing them in. 
because I really think when, especially these teams where you get the tight ends and everything else, I think he's played well. I th- that one game he played, that mostly he played, I think he did all right. But I think he still need to mix them up with those matchups in the middle because it can be really tough. I still have questions if he if team if, I, if I'm seeing him in the you know, that side, I'm going to be just run the game, run power right at him, and just make a force him to step up and try to do that. I think that's why I think he makes the matches in the slot a bit more. But linebacker, they really should solidify that and just say, hey, Nicobe, you're the guy. Yeah, John and I disagree on this one a little bit because I haven't seen enough of Roby. He played 25 snaps against the Rams, and he's the number one guy because of 25 snaps. I need to say a little bit more. He might be. John might be right. He might be the best in a lot and by plenty, but I'm not just penciling him in because he had 25 great snaps against the Rams and then got hurt. I, I need to see a little bit more, but he should be at the top of the still evaluating list for me at slot corner. Uh, I, I'm giving you a hypothetical. People love my hypotheticals. <laughs> the streamers just love when I do this. I'm putting you on the spot here, uh, uh, Chris. Sunday afternoon, halftime score, 14-10 Dallas. The Eagles are getting the ball to start the second half because, of course, they won the coin toss and they deferred, which they always do. Uh, so they get the ball to start the second half. They didn't get that, ooh, Get it right before the half and get the back-to-back possession. Didn't quite work out for the coach this week. Dallas actually uh, scores with under 30 seconds to go to take a 14-10 lead. So we're coming out in the second half. Eagles get the kickoff. They go down the field. They're driving. They get the ball first and goal from the nine-yard line. (laughs) Down 14-10, first possession in the third quarter. What running back? Would A, Chris Franklin have in the backfield with Jalen Hurts and the rest of the offense and predict for me what running back the Eagle coaching staff will have in the game. <laughs> First and goal from the nine, down 14-10, early third quarter. Once you said first and goal for nine, I knew where this question was going when it came to that. I would have DeAndre Swift because of the productions he's had in that area. He's got a full yard against Kenneth Gainwell. He's averaged about just about like a full yard against uh, more versus Kenneth Gainwell, and I like his power. But I think they're going to put Kenny in there because of the, I think they're going to put Kenny in there because they feel confident that for for some reason they use him a lot. I, I think personally, it, I, I know they like to use Kenny. They, they talk about Kenny's receiving thing, but DeAndre Swift that was one that's one of his main his main attributes is he's able to catch the ball out the backfield if you need, if you're going to still throw. I mean. But given history, what they do on the first play, most of the time on the first play in the goal, uh, first and goal, they run the ball. So I want to get the ball. I want to get the ball flowing to DeAndre Swift and let him use that power and try to get in there. And we've seen the, the fumble that he had, that Kenny's had in there. And, and he's not been as effective, in my opinion. But I mean, I, I just, they, they love Kenny in that spot. I put DeAndre in there. By the way, uh, Pro Football Focus says uh, 54 running backs rated who played enough. Uh, number 53 is Miles Sanders. Number 54 is Kenny Gainwell. Oh, get out of here. The 50, 50, they only 54. have 54 running backs yeah. Uh, ranked. Yeah, and uh, those are the guys that have played played enough to be uh, ranked. Uh DeAndre, by the way, uh, is 33rd, so it's not like he's killing it. Much of his issues are pass protection. Now, I believe you were the one who asked about Kenny and his Instagram follies. Um, Yeah. um, (laughs) Your take on that. Uh, You know, we all know we should put the phone away. You can't, you have to ignore trolls, but sometimes it's easier said than done. Um, what's your what's your take on the whole situation? That to me uh, it says a lot because I, I know these guys. It, trust me, we we get them. We all get trolled at oh, times. Oh my god! DMs, all that stuff. Yeah. It, it, it gets it gets. Uh, some of them, I will say, that some of the troll jobs are actually kind of funny. I got to laugh at some of them. Like, all right, cool. Good, yeah. But to do that, like, I, I understand you're frustrated. I understand that you're not playing as well as you did in the game. I think you had minus four yards going into that at halftime. I know you wanted to feel like you need to lash out, but that is not the time to do that. You need to focus up anything. You just have to focus on, all right, how am I going to come back and bounce back and somehow atone for that mistake that I did? And the fact that 
he, he even if, I'll, I'll give him this credit saying he didn't use expletives and he didn't use whatever could have said a lot worse, but he's still the fact that he can't do that, man. Like it's people are going to get, they're going to get under your skin. And he can't, it's to me, I question like that, that, that tells a lot. I question like the stuff, like, like, why are you doing that, man? Like what? there's no good that comes of that. You're sitting there looking, you're supposed to be, you're supposed to be one of these guys that are going to be on Tina's on the Super Bowl, and you want to jeopardize that stuff. If if this team's record was any less, or this is, this is any other coach, he probably might be either A, facing a suspension of some sort, B, might be the causeway of playing, hey, you're not playing the rest of the half or whatever, or, or see a lot, considerable amount of snaps taken away because of that. It, Nick, this is yeah, Nick, is, role. Nick is tremendously loyal. Almost yeah. To a fault. Um, I will say yeah. it if you don't want to say it, John. To a fault, Nick yeah. Sirianni can be about. It's not only players. Kenny. We we saw and and you know we've seen it with Quez Watkins. We've seen it with Derek Barnett. Now we see it with Alameda Zacchaeus. Um, when he's saying when Julio Jones comes in and he said unprompted, uh, Alameda Zacchaeus is always going to have a spot on a Nick Sirianni offense. Well, why? I mean, if you if you find better players, why? Yeah, he's uh, it hasn't been a problem to this point, but you could see where it could be a problem down the road, um, or not. Am I overstating it? Well, I think he's loyal because you know he had. <clears throat> excuse me, we, we hear him talk about so much about these roles and everything. If they're playing their role, all right, that's fine. Like Zach Pascal, Nick loved Zach Pascal going back yeah. to the Colts, and then here he was here in four four four, so he did it well. It's when you start to not do your role and you're not producing on the field and not doing anything. That's why I think you need to reevaluate the stuff. And, and I know he's, I know we talk about how, or he says that, hey, it is, these guys can be called upon at some point and you need them. They don't allow us. You don't want to crush their confidence and everything else. But sometimes I get you just that. Need, I get that. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. sometimes you just need to take them off the field and let them look and reassess things and bring them back in later and so they can have their moment later on. Like, yeah, there's a kiss. I, Zacchaeus one, I have no issue because you can see he does other things. He he is Zacchaeus is Pat this year's Pascal for sure. Quite stuff and everything else. Um, yeah, uh, that's John, the way. John always likes to point out the role player, and I understood what Zach Pascal's role was. He was a blocking wide receiver, and he was really good at it. In that role, he was a very good player. It was a limited role, but he was very good. What role does? Alameda actually fill for the Eagles? What, what, what's the aspect of his game that elevates him to the, yeah, he might not be great across the board, but in the role he plays, he's great. What's Alameda's superpower like Chris, that I'm missing out on? I'll, I'll let Chris answer that one because I have to figure it out. I, I think he's more of the, the fourth option, and if all else fails when nothing's down the field and he's running a route, that's him. That's a, like, hey, okay, where's the first down marker? Find it, sit around. If AJ's not there, Devontae's not there, that there, he's available, but I heard you like, 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 like scramble that one too. I'm available. That's the power I want on my wide receiver. <laughs> Might do that for Halloween next year. Here's the next one I got for you, Chris Franklin. And again, I'm going to sound like a worry wart. The Philadelphia Eagles are minus three in giveaway takeaway this season. And the game that they lost, they were. Minus three for the game against the Jets, right? Wasn't it like 4-1 on the turnover battle? The, the only game that they've lost, they turned it over a bunch against the Jets. They've been able to overcome that and not have it affect their one-loss record. Dallas Cowboys, I believe, are second in the league at plus eight. Some of their bad, I just had it up here. Uh, excuse me, uh, number four. They're plus six for the year. There's only three teams with better plus minus than them. Is that a big factor in this game this week? Could the Eagles yeah. lose this game because they lose the turnover battle? Yeah, if they lose, if they fumble, continue to fumble the ball in the red zone, this this game is going to be one of those where you're going to be, it, it, you're going to have to match scores. I, I really think it's going to start going. You got to match scores. I don't think it's going to be shootout. It's going to be one of those things where you you can't give you can't have possessions in their territory that don't come away with points because if you do, you're going to find yourself that way. So you can't just continue to give away. And for a life for me, I don't know. I don't know what change year to year. We've seen the emphasis they place on that ball security. We've seen the drills and everything else they do that. For some reason, they're hanging it out like a loaf of bread. They're punching it out. And it's, it's, like, it's like they also regressed in that term, in that part of their game. And 
They can't against teams like the Cowboys in, in this next stretch. No matter what, in this next stretch of games, they cannot turn this ball over because that's going to cost them. Like they got away with it because of the opponents they played. It really is. That's that's what it came down to. A lot of their opponents they played, they got they were able to get away with that stuff. You can't do this against these teams. Some of them you may see in the Super Bowl on the AFC side, and some of these you might be fight probably fighting for an AFC championship game. So this yeah. is going to be hard. You can't. You know, it's funny. Hard, 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 hard away. We were sitting uh, waiting for the coordinators yesterday in the auditorium, Chris. And uh, I don't know if you heard, but Merrill Merrill Reese uh, asked me if that was new, and he was pointing at the. Uh, the ball security takeaway, the big banner. At oh, the top eagle call. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it's not new. They put it up there this year. But I, I think it was funny. Merrill brought it up, and I was like, you know, they first put it up last year when they were ridiculous. The first, where were they, plus 11? And they put this thing up. It was on the sides, and then they combined it into one. And ever since they put that damn thing up, it hasn't worked. Superstition, <laughs> Chris? Just rip that thing down. Right? <laughs> it's so much ingrained in their mind. They're starting to worry about making sure their eagle yeah, claw and it's going, when they go to cafeteria. <laughs> when you go to cafeteria, eagle claw your uh, your tray. If not, somebody's going to come by and swat it out there and eat that. But <laughs> <laughs> but you can't. Yeah, it is. Now, nah, I maybe it's, per, it's personnel. I think it's personnel based on that one, too. I mean, yeah, the fact that it's in every meeting, every time they have a meeting in that room is top of mind. You still can't, do, you still fumble the ball. It's like, yeah. what's going on there? I am uh, scared that C.D. Lamb could have this massive breakout game against Eagles this week because John has thoroughly convinced me they don't have a uh, slot corner unless uh, somehow Bradley Ruby miraculously is not only on the field, but – 100% healthy and great, I think C.D. Lamb's going to have a big number this week, and that's scary. But I also believe A.J. Brown's getting 125 again, don't you? He's going he's, 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 he's already got the record at six. Why not make it second, seven? Put distance between yourself and everybody else. There's nobody on the Cowboys that can cover A.J. Brown, is there? Nah, nah. First of all, I'll go back to the original point. I probably have slayed. This is a week I probably have slayed travel. I would do take him away and then force Gallup and beat you that way. If he travels though and he goes slot, into the though. slot, then what yeah. do you do? Yeah. I, I I still put him in there. I trust him. I trust him to put put him in there and leave the space. Like okay, you know what? And especially you want him to be the guy. You want him to be the guy in the secondary. You're going to shut down their best guy. That's this is one of those weeks where you say, you know what? I'm shutting you down. You got your best best on best. Try to beat me somewhere else. That's more when it comes to that. But when it comes to Cowboys covering, yeah, they don't have anybody. They don't have anybody to do that. And it's going to be one of those things where uh, we talk about Diggs, that's a big injury. Uh, yep. you know, he's not there. Deron Bland's playing really well though. Um, yeah. step on Gilmore can still play. And then, uh, I guess, uh, Jordan Lewis, uh, would be the third corner, but if they had Trayvon Diggs, then I'd be like, this, this might be the best Good group matchup, of cornerbacks right? in the NFL, mm -hmm. but yeah, he's not there. AJ, you know, Michael Irvin brought up a good point. I rarely say that, but he said this is the game of 11s. Either Micah Parsons is going to wreck the game or A.J. Brown's going to wreck the game. Uh, <laughs> and if Micah doesn't get home, A.J.'s going to wreck the game. Is it that simple, Chris Franklin? I don't think so, but if you give me the choice of 11s, given the history of this rivalry, yeah, I'll take that every day because we saw what Michael Parsons has done against the Eagles. Yeah, yeah. Lane, baby. <laughs> yeah. And, and the Lane only thing Johnson. That think, it's a Lane Lane's. Johnson week because yeah, Micah he, is unblockable against everybody else. Yeah, and, and, you gotta, and the only thing that worries me about that is a lot of times that matchup last year, the first one, they played Micah, they had Micah play in space with the zone read, but you know, Jalen Hurts' leg is not 100% yeah. and then running that, so he may have to tweak that a little bit. And if he does that, I think that's the only way you really come back at it. But, yeah, I'll take I'll take the Eagles 11 over the that, that 11. All right, I'm going to give, give you another prediction here, Chris, and I won't make you pick the game because it's only Wednesday, and that's not fair. At least I don't think so. I ask somebody to make a pick on Wednesday before we get our first injury estimated injury report or anything else. So yeah, here's the big estimation today. Estimation. Yeah, walkers. Yeah. Walkers on, on, Cal on Dallas week. That's good. Um, 
Here's the estimation I need from you, because since John went to Michael Parsons, I'm going there too. He sat on his podcast this week. Everybody's got a podcast. Yes, he does. <laughs> Cow Cowboy Nation, we need you at Lincoln Financial Field. Uh, we know they're a pretty good traveling fan base. They've got fans all over the country, blah, 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 blah. Um, not as good as the Philadelphia Eagle fan base. But how? what do you think the percentage is of Cowboy fans at Lincoln Financial Field? Because Michael Parsons threw down a gauntlet and said, we can get enough Cowboy fans into Philadelphia uh, behind enemy lines. Come on, Cowboy Nation, show up loud and proud in Philadelphia. How many Cowboy fans are actually going to get into the building on Sunday? We I ask John this every week when it's a road game. What was the percentage of Eagles fans? Because it's amazing what the Eagle fans do on the road uh, between Eagle fan and home fan. What's going to be the percentage of Cowboy fans on Sunday, Chris Frank? You know, last year at home game, I remember seeing a, a, a couple smatterings of blue around there. I still think, if anything, it's going to be like 10 to 15%, if that, if that. Because, yeah, the Eagles, Cowboys, no Eagles fan. Every Eagles fan, this is one game they, you sell, people try to sell tickets. Like, oh, let me get a ticket for that. No, I'm not selling this game. I want to go to that one. So, yeah, it's, they're not, that whole takeover thing. No, nah, can't take over Lincoln Financial Field. Yeah. But uh, try to it, take over, maybe, take over at the opposition fans allow you. But how I described it is to Jody is there will be more Cowboy fans than any other visiting team this year. Um which won't be a lot, but there will be there will be a smattering uh, of cowboy fans, and uh, they're uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, they have a big following. There's no there's no use denying it. Um, but I'll end it here with you at C Franklin News. Make sure uh, you follow Chris on Twitter or X or whatever you like to call it these days. NJ.com. Read them all over the place. Does a tremendous job. Um, we'll go back to the trade deadline because um, that's the the big story uh, of the week. And the Eagles also got rid of uh, Contavia Street. We talk about that now. Not a big deal, um, but they have tremendous depth on the defensive front. Moving forward. Do you think they want to get Moro Ajomo more reps? They definitely want to get Nolan Smith more reps. How, how do you feel about that? Is that, you know, this is a Super Bowl team versus development. Do you put development off to the side? There's no harm in redshirting people. They're redshirting Ringo except for special teams. What's the big deal? I, I think they may give him a the couple of snaps, like the Marlon snaps, but I, I still think it's more of a, hey, you know what? It gives you more opportunity to use Jalen Carter and stuff like that because I am more, more Jalen Carter and Mill Williams because, what was he at? Like 20, with uh, continue to say, like 22 snaps, something like, something like well, that. He played, he played a lot. He had 22 against yeah. uh, Washington. He had 23 one, yeah. against the Jets uh, because of injuries. I mean, Jalen was hurt, and then it was Jalen and Jordan. So he played when guys were hurt. Yeah. Uh, would the same thing hold true with, with Morrow if somebody's banged up? If Fletch is banged, that was the Fletcher game, I guess, the Jets game where Fletcher yeah. missed. Um, if somebody's banged up, would they just up those Milton snaps, up those Carter snaps, up those Davis snaps, or 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 is he taking that Contavious role? I, I, I think they get just get increase the snaps a little bit because I think they got a good thing going right now when it comes to that that red rotation. And you still have Marlon in the background in case you really need him. And because that Marlon, I think he he did a decent job for most of training camp. But I look at what you have right now and what you got going with that line. I think there's just humming right now. I think you still stick with those guys. And I, I, I I've been wanting to see Jalen Carter get more snaps because I think he can be more of an impact. I know they want to keep everybody fresh, but I think he's that impactful yeah, he's that good. he can disrupt him. So I want to give him more playing time to right. <laughs> more snaps. Challenge covers good. <laughs> Breaking news. <laughs> By the way, I just, just got a text, uh, and it's completely acceptable because it's not halftime of the game. It was Mauro Jomo said, tell Franklin I'm playing this week. Uh, forget <laughs> Mauro. Mauro texted me and said, you're just woefully wrong. All right. And you know what? I'm disagreeing with John, too. What else is new? There will be another game where there'll be more fans in the stands. That'll be week 17. 
when Marcus Mariota is scheduled to start for the Eagles against the Arizona Cardinals because the Eagles have already locked up everything in the NFC. Oh, no, wait. That's chance to boo Jonathan Gannon. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> no, I, well, I said more that opposition way. fans. That's why right. I mean. I'm saying more Cardinal fans because uh, they want to. Eagles will uh, be they willing love to give up their they tickets because they don't want to see Mar- Marcus Mariota play quarterback. They love they love JG out there. Uh, they think he's doing a good job. Um, you know, that's a very bad team, and they're competing. Um, <laughs> and that's all you can ask for. The big Josh Dobbs trade too. That's a blockbuster, huh? I think the only way I think that really does that is you hope that he's good enough that when the Vikings play him, to, like almost a similar situation where the Giants play him, that he knocks off the Lions one of those two. Because I think I think it goes to Week 18. I think everything's decided then because the line between the Lions and the Eagles and maybe the 49ers. Yeah, maybe the Lions. Yeah. I, I'm concerned about the Lions, Chris, because uh, they get to play the Vikings twice with Jaron Hall or Josh Dobbs or Nick Mullins or Chris Franklin. Um, yeah, but yeah, but when Montez Sweat drives Jared Goff into the ground for those Chicago Bears, oh, that's true. That's be true. careful. I'm gonna <laughs> say they beat Tyson Badgett. What's his name? I always get it wrong. Tyson Badgett, you're correct. Tyson Badgett, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna say they beat him. There's a good chance too. Josh uh, Justin Fields is back this week, so. And by the way, check Justin's number. He hadn't been that bad. I know they haven't won any damn games, but Justin. No, he's been better. He's been much. He's been much better this year. He's been much better because they actually went out and got him a wide receiver who can play. Uh, Try and do more of that in Chicago. All right, uh, Franklin, we're running late. Thank you very much for jumping in. You know we love you. Read him at uh, nj.com. Does an outstanding job for that publication following the birds day in the day out. Chris Franklin here with us on Birds 365. All right, quickie timeout. Come back. Got to put a bow on the show. Stay right there. 